Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in chapter 1 and looking at the next topic that is 1.2 success factors in test automation. So when you generally talk about the success factors in test automation, it comprises of several factors which put together can help you to achieve success when implementing test automation within your organization. There are several things to be considered at this point of time. The very first thing we are talking about is the test automation architecture. Now, what is architecture? What is test automation architecture? We will be talking in more detail in depth in the upcoming chapter. So here we are just talking in basic that what is a test automation architecture should be aligned with in terms of the software product. It should clearly identify the functional and non-functional requirements, what we will be requiring because of course the test automation is not limited to functional testing. We do have several quality characteristics, non-functional parameters to be tested. So of course the architecture plays a really vital role which is the base fundamental design for creating the automation tests to be applied within the entire testing timeline or process. So of course that will decide a lot of time required and how much you know effort is required for that. So of course it should be also maintainable. It should be designed in such a way that the performance and learnability becomes easy for the other people because it's, it's always possible that the other person can review your test script and maybe probably execute as well. On the other side, we do have also something called as SUT testability, which SUT stands for system under test. That means in simple terms, the application. The application needs to be designed in such a way that it is testable in terms of the components or the you know objects which you create on the application. It should be basically decoupled as much as possible. Now, what do you mean by decoupling as much as possible? That means when you talk about the web-based applications, generally you create a frame and probably it is possible that to restrict security or maybe the processing of it or capturing the information, you may probably capture all the fields as one particular frame, but not the fields independently. Now, certain automation test tools are not capable of capturing every single component to feed in the information and execute a test. And that's where we face challenges and that could not be testable with help of automation. So all you need to do is make sure that every individual component is testable as much as possible. In the case of similarly in the KPI testing, the classes, modules, and command line interfaces should be exposed as much as possible so that it can be tested well. But of course, API follows altogether a different approach compared to GUI testing. Similarly, when you talk about the testable parts of the SUT, it should be targeted first because uh, the reason is whatever is testable, you target and create your automation framework and whatever is not covered with the framework that can probably be covered in different approaches like manual testing or exploratory testing or so on. So you need to have certain protocols when it comes to SUT testability factor which need to be considered when implementing test automation. Further, when you talk about the test automation strategy is another component or factor to be considered when talking about the success of the automation. Of course, a strategy will determine what is the entire outline to be used for the overall test automation. Here we have a lot of things like, for example, talking about maintainability, consistency of the SUT. How many times or like how long will you be maintaining it which is required for any kind of revisions, any kind of changes, any maintenance updates and how consistent the product will remain. That means how many minor changes, how many major changes will that be impacting the major side of the product. So of course all your automation tests need to be updated at the same time. So remember that what maintenance applies to the product the same should be applied to your automation scripts as well. So we try to keep it as minimal as possible and consistent, which is more important. It may not be possible to apply the test automation strategy in the same way to both old and new parts of the SUT. Of course, when the changes are invited, the changes might invite updates on the test. So a strategy must include the additional cost compared to that of the initial cost which you invested while creating the basic test. Now when tomorrow your test gets updated, or sorry, your uh, modules get updated in the application, of course your test will need to be revised or new test cases to be added to the, uh, the previous test suites. So based on that, of course, the additional cost, benefits, risk, and a lot of other factors to be considered as a part of strategy. 
Consideration should be given to the testing both the user interface as well as API of course as you know now it should be applicable and should be considered in terms of strategy. On the other side of course we're talking about the test automation framework again team we will be talking in more detail about the same in the upcoming tutorials but here we're just talking in the very layman level that how the test automation frameworks contributes to success factors of test automation. So of course it, is, it should be easy to use, well documented and maintainable, supports a consistent approach to automating test in order to establish an easy to use and maintainable TAF, the following must be done. What are they? Implement reporting facilities, like how will you be capturing the results? Enable easy troubleshooting, like the application or the solutions or the environment of the test, anything. Address the test environment appropriately, like the configurations of the operating system and environment. Document the automation test cases, trace the automated test, enable easy maintenance, keep the automated test up to date, plan for deployment when you are going to you know, deploy that on the environment and execute it, retire tests as needed. That means if you think any tests are no longer required, the comp component has completely modified, remove that because that would take a lot of, uh, you know, parameters when executing the test. It may increase your execution time and many other factors. Monitor and restore the SUT. So that is like consistent process from time to time. At the end, of course, we're talking about the success factors summary. Uh, we're talking about like how it can be difficult to maintain at some point of time. Of course, if you make it more complex and complex, it will be difficult to maintain. And it is not usual to have such more, more such you know as much code for the testing as the code for the SUT. This is why it is of utmost importance that the course test code be maintainable, because uh, we have the benefit of the test automation is that it is often repeated and it is repeated various times and then of course the test is supposed to be maintainable and if you create something static or something one time and you just move into the next test of course the, you cannot utilize the facilities or the benefits of the test automation within the organization. At the same time, this is also, you know, there is a possibility that different test tool being used, uh, you know, for one particular module, you use one particular test, then another tool is used for another test. So that could become a lot of, uh, add a lot of complications to your test automation, and that could probably add uh, in turn risk uh, to be implementing and using the test automation and complete failure as well. With these maintenance consideration in mind, in addition to the important items that should be done, there are few that should not be done as follows. So what key factors you should be keeping in mind to be avoided when working with the success or implementing success factors for the test automation? That is, do not create code that is sensitive to interface, which simply means that it is specific to a particular graphic. That means the name, or it could be uh, the coordinate, which can be changed later. Maybe a project is moved from a first point to another point. Then, of course, if your script included a coordinate-based script, then, of course, it will not work. So do not make completely dependent on the interface. Do not create test automation that is sensitive to data changes. That means, again, data dependent. So if or what if your data has been modified, then it becomes a challenge at that point of time as well. Do not create an automated automation environment that is sensitive to context, of course. Do not use any kind of dates or system pair parameters. Now, when you talk about system parameters, it simply means that the operating system date and time or physical position or the geolocation, which might be changed because the test is portable. It might be executed on other operating system. The date and time may vary. And of course, the configuration may also vary. So generally, we keep that scheduling the test, like if this is this particular date and system configuration is this, continue further. So your generic functions may uh, cause an issue if your tests are moved to another system. So we generally take care of all these parameters when designing and creating test automation scripts and frameworks put together to make sure that the test automation is successful within the organization. So that's all from this particular tutorial team, and that's all from this particular chapter as well. We'll be getting back to you with the sample questions. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching the video team. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Happy learning.